What's interesting about these animals is that they remain in sync with geophysical time despite the fact that they're exposed to a 24-hour photo period. They're actually leading fairly typical lives of getting up around 6 in the morning and, and retiring to their burrows around 8 or 9 or 10 at night. Even though it isn't night, again, it's light. My students are very interested in why is the sun up all the time? And then they were very interested in how do people sleep when it's day all the time? What do the animals do? Which is the exact question we're trying to answer as scientists with the ground squirrels. We're wondering why do the squirrels keep this rigid schedule when there's not the, the daylight cycle like normal? We're heading down to a site we have near the Adigan River, which has a really high density of Arctic ground squirrels. And the reason the density is very high down there is because there's a lots of sandy soil available for burrowing. So in the back of the truck right now, we have six Arctic ground squirrels. Their circadian clock, their master oscillator within the brain, is guiding their daily rhythms and that there's something in the environment that is likely cueing or entraining that clock. We think they use other cues in the environment. It could be the position of the sun. So you'll learn that when it's midnight, the sun is over the lake, and when it's noon, the sun's over the mountains. Maybe the ground squirrels have figured that out. How, we're not sure. The sun at night turns a little redder, and is bluer at noon. Maybe they can detect the frequency shifts in the solar spectrum. Some birds can do that. Maybe these ground squirrels do it as well. The color temperature of the light changes across the day. The intensity of light will change across the day as well. And it could very well be that the Arctic ground squirrel has a very fine-tuned sensitivity to the quantity and quality or some combination of those variables that enable it to entrain its rhythms of activity and physiology independent of having an actual light-dark signal. This is a light logger here and then this is a radio transmitter. It's got a magnet on it. If you take the magnet off then it starts transmitting. So some of the squirrels will get both a light logger and a radio transmitter on one collar. So we put the collar on and then we gotta make sure that it's not too tight, so we're sizing it. To do that we make sure that you can still fit a pencil underneath so that they can still eat, swallow, breathe okay. And then once we think it's a good size, then we just cut it. So that squirrel's asleep? Uh, she's anesthetized. We're going to collect information off of these light loggers that we've put out on females in the field right now. And we'll be able to tell when they've been above ground and when they've been below ground. And then when we line that up with the data that we're collecting from the weather tower, we'll be able to see if information about temperature or rainfall or wind is really affecting when they're above ground and when they're below ground. So what parts of the climate are they responding to? We're dissecting each of these cues and trying to understand which are, are more important for them. But it's always with the eye on how it is they're getting ready for hibernation and when is it then now on an annual basis that they decide to check out in the fall to enter the hibernation state. And then in the spring, there they are a meter deep in the frozen tundra. They can't see the, the changing day length. They don't feel the warming temperatures. How do they know when to come out of hibernation? Understanding clock function is really important to human biology. You know, we've been talking about squirrels and hibernation and climate change, and those are all really interesting questions and important in their own right. However, so many of the disease states, the pathologies that are exhibited by humans today are characterized by a breakdown in clock function. The one that jumps right to mind is near and dear to us here in Alaska, and that's seasonal affective disorder. That costs the state and costs health in a huge way. Well, that has to do with clock function. But some that you may not have thought about include cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, old age senility, 
the list goes on and on. Virtually any pathology that you can think of is tied to a breakdown in clock function. The question is, what is causal and what is effect? And we don't know the answer to that, but the clock is intimately involved. When I go up to Tulik in the summertime and after being there for a week, I find that I'm going to bed at about 3.30 in the morning and wanting to get up around noon. My clock is free running. Why doesn't that squirrel's clock free run under those same conditions? And is there something that we could learn about clock function that has some relevance to human medicine? Mm -hmm.